just got finished doing a couple of days of work. And, um, you know, I was, I'm in the room. I'm finally by myself. It's quiet. There's no people around. I'm chilling. And I'm like, you know, trying to figure out something to do. So, you know, I figured, all right, let me go turn the news on. And then it dawned on me. I was like, but the, the news agitates me. It's disruptive. It, I get aggravated. And I was like, nah. And then I felt this crazy urge, like I couldn't stop myself from going to turn the news on. And I was like, oh shit. And I realized my mind was seeking disturbance. Like, nah, it's too peaceful. I need, I need to be disrupted and, and aggravated. And then I realized, like, we actually have to cultivate a taste for peace. We're actually addicted to things that agitate and aggravate us, you know? You're like, damn, every time I see this person, we argue. I'm, I just, I don't, I don't want to argue with this fool. Well, stop. What, what happens is we actually get addicted to the argument. We're addicted to the aggravation, addicted to the agitation. I just really made a decision to myself today, just sitting here in the Cayman Islands, that I'm going to be quiet, I'm going to be still, and I'm going to be alone. So just for the day, let's be quiet, let's be still, be alone. I mean, right after you listen to my IG story and right after you, you follow me, then, then put it down. Politicians have tried, oh, have they tried, to centralize authority among the hands of a small few in our nation's capital. I see them all the time. Bureaucrats think they can run over your lives, overrule your values, meddle in your faith, and tell you how to live, what to say, and where to pray. But we know that parents, not bureaucrats, know best how to raise their children and create a thriving society. And we know that families and churches, not government officials, know best how to create a strong and loving community.
And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government, we worship God.
5480 in the, in the Strong's Concordance in the, in the Greek. And it says a scratch, an etching, a stamp, as a badge of servitude or cut into. It takes you to the word charax, which is to sharpen to a point the idea of scratching a stake, a pointed object, pointed into. I believe what John saw as Jesus was giving him the book of Revelation, I believe what he saw was a hypodermic needle, and I'm going to tell you why. Because in the meetings that I have been in, meetings in Luxembourg, meetings in London, meetings at the Sir Francis Drake Hotel in San Francisco with a lot of these people, I've been in 17 of these One World type meetings, the, the whole idea behind it is identification. And folks, it's not a barcode. You can't contain enough in a barcode. <laughs> first, first thing is nobody would accept a barcode who wants that thing out there. But I believe it's the microchip under the under the skin. And by the way, I'll go into uh, at the last meeting we had, meeting we had this morning, a uh, church that we were in. A man walked up who was a government a government employee right here in Sacramento and said, "I attended a meeting last week where they said key personnel will receive the microchip, government personnel." key personnel and he was in that meeting and so we're, we're finding these things well God showed me something else he said take a look at the not the numbers 666 but the word for 666 I said Lord I didn't know there was one of those and there is it is 5516 in the Strong's Concordance and it's Chicks of Stigma the 22nd and 14th, an also letter of the Greek alphabet, intermediate between the 5th and 6th, used as numbers denoting respectively 660 and 6. That takes you to the word stigma. The, the last part of that word is stigma. Now I want you to listen to this carefully because uh, it's, it's, it's really, it was difficult to dig this out. It's difficult to share it with you. The word stigma, is to stick or to prick a mark incised or punched for recognition of ownership. And so I looked at all of those and I wept for days. And God said, you let me take care of it. You go and share the message. I set you, O son of man, as a watchman on the wall to sound the trumpet. And if you don't sound the trumpet, their blood is on your hands. But if you sound the trumpet and they don't listen, the blood is on their hands. And folks, I'm here to share these things with you for a reason. There's too many things that have tied together in these days. We have children in Florida right now in daycare centers receiving the microchip identification. It is being used in many, many areas. There's Alzheimer's patients receiving it. The whole thing about the, the pictures on the milk cartons and the paper bags was government funded, and that thing was to condition you about lost children. And it has served its purpose, and you're seeing it disappear now. You check back and find out who paid for it. There wasn't a committee paying for it. It was paid for through an organization called Evergreen, which is a CIA operation. And they paid for it. Now, I want, to, I want to point something else out to you. I fought the lithium, and they overruled me, and they used lithium. Up to one of the doctors in my Boston Medical Center about the concentration of lithium used in the microchip. I said, what happens if that breaks down? If the chip breaks down, if, if there's a blow struck and it breaks down? He said, and this guy was an atheist. He said, it'll cause a sore, a, you know, a grievous sore. And I went and I looked at Revelation 16, verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped the image. I want to point out something to you folks. That sore is singular. It's sore. They didn't break out with sores. They broke out with a sore. If that might, I believe God's going to pop them microchips all at once for all the people that have cut them, and they're all going to end up with a boil on their hand. Praise God. You know, it's an interesting thing about God is omnipresent, omnipotent. He is everywhere. But what's the Antichrist got to do? He's got to use every bit of technology he can to keep track of you and I. And so he's going to use everything he can. And that's the reason why I believe we've come to this. It's not an easy message. It's a hard message to go out and give. But I want to tell you something, folks. God is on the throne. 
and we win. And if you'll check the tomb, it is empty. And we need to be excited about that. We're living in the most exciting time we could ever live in. The reason why you're pulled together as a body of Christ is to be with one another, to support one another, to lift one another up. I had people ask me this morning, uh, well, what should we do? Uh, when's this going to happen? I tell them, you know, the when doesn't make any difference. If you don't know the who, you're in trouble already. I want to tell you something. I'm not selling box shelters, folks. I'm not selling a, a place in your backyard to store food. I'm not selling a special glove to wear. I'm not selling anything. I'm sharing with you a message. The technology is here. Now, I want to move on a little bit more in this technology. We now have 23 satellites overhead that can read a postage stamp laying on a tennis court. If you think you're keeping a secret the fact that you're coming to church here, the satellite can read your license plates every 19 minutes without any problem at all. The technology is there. People talk about here a while back, there was flashes across the sky, and they were wondering what it was. These were satellites being taken out of the system, satellites that their perigee and the epigee will interfere with a new series of satellites that's going up. It was just announced about three weeks ago. We knew it was coming for a long time. They are LEO satellites, low Earth orbiting satellites. These satellites are orbiting 98 to 100 miles up. There is 66 of them being put up by Motorola in conjunction with the Russians. These satellites will do away with all cellular towers, and there will not be a place where you can go to hide. We can pick up your body temperature change right now, the difference between 98.6 and 104, and so we can pick that up. So what I'm telling you is that there's no place that you're going to run and hide. Now, don't get in despair on me, because I want to tell you something. Again, we win. Jesus... Jesus was standing there. They picked up stones to stone him, and he walked back through their midst, and they saw him not. Where are you going to hide? You want to fear what Big Brother's going to do? You want to fear what the government's going to do? I'm going to tell you, folks, we're moving rapidly to a cashless society. We're moving to the point where your debit card is going to be in. It is now your credit card and debit card together, and we're moving rapidly towards that. In Clinton and Gore's new book, uh, Putting People First, he says, and Hillary said today, they want every man, woman, and child in the United States to be carrying a smart card. The smart card is a French card. A million of them have already been brought into Maryland in the welfare system. Folks, it has the microchip in it. It is the same readout as the microchip for the back of the hand. And the system is being prepared for that microchip. Now, these cards are coming in. That's the smart card. The ATM machines are being changed so that they will scan this type of thing. These things are moving rapidly. So the, the system is being set up. The message that I have to give you is don't take it. Don't take it. Somebody comes and tries to talk you into this new identification, you've got an answer for them. Don't take it. It says, who are these around the throne, the merits and merits around the throne? These are those that lost their life because they would not take the charagma. The mark. So there's going to be people that are going to lose their lives because they won't take the mark. We are moving rapidly in that direction. The Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare stated that welfare fraud is running $500 million a quarter. He was on a talk show. He said that is going to cease by the end of 93. We are going to have positive identification. The talk show host asked him what it was. He said electronic media under the skin. The Immigration Control Act of 1986, Section 100, states the President has the authority to order whatever type of identification he deems necessary, whether it be electronic media under the skin or whether it be an invisible tattoo. The invisible tattoo was thrown out because it can't be upgraded. The microchip has an E-squared e prompt section of it. It can be, a part of it can be erased and you can write more into it. So you can change the data. The, the chip fits exactly what the Bible says is happening. People say to me, well, what happens if I cross my fingers when they come and bring me the chip? And I take it and I cross my fingers and I really, I really, uh, or I cross my toes or I cross my legs or I do something. And I don't really mean it when they give it to me. I don't have an answer for you except this. Revelation 14. Verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast in his, in his image, and whosoever 
receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Folks, that's the only answer I have for you. I'm saying don't take it. This is not something you can play with and back out of. I have sat there with Gates from the CIA, with Bush when he was with the CIA, with Henry Kissinger and these people in meetings in Luxembourg where they discussed the very thing you cannot control a people if you cannot identify them. And that's why we have $500 million in welfare fraud every quarter is because you can't identify people. You can fake cars. You can counterfeit cars. You can lose cards. You can loan your card to somebody else. But the microchip in a hand, you cannot lose your hand. You might lose your keys, but you can't lose your hand. You can't then staple or mutilate the thing. You can't counterfeit it. And if somebody steals your hand and goes to the market to use it to buy food, the guy's going to know right away something is wrong. Okay? Can you imagine carrying your friend's head into the supermarket and saying, I want to buy these groceries? Folks, it is the ultimate identification. And it is here. It is being used. 17,000 babies were done three years ago. There is no ill effects. We've got, uh, we've got these projects coming. I just talked to a man from Sweden today, and he said they did 6,000 men in Sweden with the microchip and have had no problems at all. It is coming worldwide. You see, this scripture talks about the world. It doesn't talk about just the United States. There is a one-world government coming. By the way, there is a one-world government under Jesus Christ that's coming. The Antichrist has got to use everything he can do to fake his one-world government. Okay? Oh, I promised to tell you about those streaks across the sky you saw a few months ago. People were talking about them. They were in the paper, and they didn't understand what they were. At Stanford, we developed, we worked with a, with a convergence laser. We did a lot of things with that convergence laser. It was part of a Star Wars-type program. That convergence laser we took down to, to uh, Edwards Air Force Base, we used it down there. But that convergence laser is what's been knocking those renegade satellites out of the sky, okay? And that's what you're seeing is the flash of those things being knocked out. The perigee and the epigee of those satellites will interfere with the LEO satellites when they put them up. There are many things that I'd like to share with you. There are things about the One World Government and what's going on in the One World Government, clear from the Illuminati right on down to the Federal Reserve System. The Federal Reserve System, folks, is neither federal nor is it a reserve. It has no reserves. It is controlled and held by five banks. It is controlled by the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. The men's pay the work in the Federal Reserve comes out of Europe. It doesn't even come out of the United States. It is owned by the banking system. It causes the ebbs and flows and the fluctuations in our money, but it does not belong to our government. Okay? The Federal Reserve has never been audited. Men who have tried to ask for an audit of the Federal Reserve have suddenly disappeared. There's things that happen to them. Harry Reisner, a man who I spoke with in, in Seattle, made a statement on his program about it was time we had an audit of the Federal Reserve. Two weeks later, he was dead. Flight 007, a congressman that was on that, had been pounding for an audit of the Federal Reserve System, and he was gone. It's pretty easy to mistake a Boeing 747 for a fighter aircraft, and that's what they shot down. They thought they shot down an intruding fighter, and it was a 747. Korean Airlines Flight 007. Folks, I want to tell you something. There is a conspiracy. You can, you can believe it. You can bank on it. There is a conspiracy in this country to bring us to a one-world government. Let me tell you a little bit about one of the aspects of that conspiracy, and then I'm going to close. I, I'm not able to share everything tonight. We have tapes and literature out there, and we have the One World Government tape, and so you're, you're welcome to take that. That's, that's right. I'm about, about out of time. I just want to tape, and you'll, you'll be able to hear them. I want to talk about a group called the Trilateral Commission, because I think it affects each and every one of you. 1973, David Rockefeller, who headed the Trilateral, who, who formed the Trilateral Commission, called upon five of his Arab buddies, who were all Masons, and, 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 and let's boycott the oil to the United States. At the same time, they kept wells in, in uh, Louisiana. They kept wells in, in California here. They shut them down. They shut down any North Shore crude that was coming out. And all of you found yourself at gas lines 
five gallons at a time every other day. And it was predicted what you were going to do. They knew what you were going to do. You turned around then and started buying toys. You bought Toyotas, Datsuns, all kinds of Japanese cars. Japan turned into an industrial giant overnight, had so much money that much of that money ended up in Europe, coming back into the United States, purchasing companies like Signetics, uh, like uh, a large percentage of General Electric and other companies. Many of my patents were moved to France and uh, to other countries because of this. Technology moved out of the country. You can go over to Silicon Valley and you can find weeds going up through parking lots in some of the buildings that are over there. The technology moved because they had the money to buy it. The largest landowners in the state of California and in Washington and Oregon are foreign landowners owning great conglomerates of land. Many things have gone on in the banking system to create uh, these kind of things. Banking regulations have changed. Farmers who had good loans all of a sudden lost their farms because the banking regulations had changed. And these things ended up into corporate farms and conglomerates and foreign owned. Uh, you can't hardly go to a golf course in California here, but what it isn't owned, foreign owned. Am I against foreign ownership? No, I'm just telling you. Folks, I'm a thermometer, not a rheostat. You can't turn me up or down. I'm just telling you what is. And what happened out of that thing with the Trilateral Commission was that they turned Japan into an industrial giant. We are a debtor nation to Japan today. We owe Japan more money than we can pay. And it happened because of that. The trade deficits go on and on and on. There have been no trade restrictions put against Japan, and you'll see every time it comes up, it fizzles. And the reason it does is because the government's out of control of what's going on there. I'm going to tell you something else, and this may come as a shock to you. This last election we had, Clinton and Gore were at a Bilderberger meeting in Biden and they five months before the election. I've got documentation and pictures of them coming out of the building. David Rockefeller was with them, and he said, he thanked the news media for keeping the secret of the Bilderbergers. The election was over, folks, at that point. The election was over. Bush did not put up a fight. He was very passive in all of the debates. He did not put up a fight. There was a concern that even at that, there was momentum building. So H. Roth Perot, who is a CFR member, was brought back in at the last moment to pull Bush votes. Now, these are conspiracies, folks, that are documented, and they, are, they happened. You look at the popular vote and how close it was, and if Perot hadn't come back in, it would have been a different story. A lot of people... A lot of people thought that Bush was going to win, but Clinton and Gore had been set up. The commander-in-chief had been removed and a new commander-in-chief put in. It's time we stop fooling around. There is no place that you can hide. The surveillance satellites will find you wherever you go. We are truly moving to a cashless society where you will not be able to bind or sell.